Okay, so you finished up uh, doing your project, your Avid project. You've used the color to correct it, your audio to make the audio sounds good. You've trimmed it up and you're ready to go. But now you need to uh, show people what you've done. And rather than carry Avid around with you everywhere, you want to make a separate digital file. And this is done through a process called exporting. You highlight the timeline, load up the sequence you want to export, highlighting the timeline. I can see this turns to a color. And then I go up to File, Output, Export to File. And this window comes up, and there I see it's titled Dog Story Dot Movie. I can change the title there if I want. Uh, I'd like to send it to the desktop first. Eventually, I'm going to keep it on my drive, but we're going to make a couple of different versions. So I'm sending it to the desktop so we can see it. We want to send to QuickTime Movie. There are a couple of options there, but that's the one we want. And it's important to set the options for that. This window opens, and we see again Exports QuickTime Movie. In here, you could change it to just audio or just a graphic file, but of course, we want QuickTime Movie. Now, you may notice here these little check boxes, these little marks that you can do, and what does this mean? Well, if I select this one here, Use Selected Tracks, it means that I've only selected Video 1, Audio 1, Audio 2. It means that those are the only items that will be exported, only the stuff on those tracks. So you may say, well, why would I want to do that? Well, suppose you were doing something a little more important than the dog story. You were making your own little film, your own little documentary maybe, and you wanted to send what you did, something longer than the, this dog story uh, sequence, to a buddy who does audio, send it to the audio guy. So this way you would not include the test uh, track that you use, this dummy track, this you know sample track that you edited to. You want him to edit and compose uh, new music for you. This way he could add it to your version of the movie without the audio. So that's one possibility. We're not sending the uh, graphics either according to this setup. So maybe you have a graphics person making new graphics. So you want them to have a clean version to see how that works. So that's why you would do that. But in the normal 99% case, especially working at Hofstra, you're going to want to not have any of these checked. That's number one. Number two, make sure you have video and audio checked. Uh, very often a rookie mistake will be they go through all this, but they had video only checked, so when they play it back, the separate digital file, it has no audio. Oh my God, what happened? I look at the settings, and that's what happened. So again, there are reasons why you may want to do that, but we want video and audio. And the most important thing here is same as source. Okay, same as source. What does that mean? That means that we will be doing no compression. That basically it will meld together all these separate clips into one big clip without compressing it. Using the same uh, resolution, the same Avid codec to reproduce the highest quality possible. Okay, the exact same quality possible when it exports the new digital file. That's really good. It's also the quickest way by the way, of exporting stuff from Avid. The only problem with it, it'll result in a large sized file, you know, gigabyte wise, that may be too big for certain computers to play back correctly, uh, probably too big to distribute uh, to certain websites and things. So we're gonna want to recompress that, but once we get it out, you want to have, you want to have a highest quality version of what you did. You want to keep that digital file and use it to compress later for different uses. So that's the one you want to keep and have, even if it's not the one you deliver. So we're good. Quick time movie, same as source, video and audio. The only other thing to check is the dimensions, uh, you know, kind of legacy wise. It allows you to make the old square four by three. That's another mistake I see happening sometimes. People don't notice that's clicked and it comes out all squished. We don't want that. We want to be 16 by nine, but I put it in of dimensions, the size that we made it in. You can't go wrong with that. It's the size we made, that's the size we want. Okay, so we have all those selected, not a big deal, quick time, same as source, video, audio, native dimensions, and then we save those settings, and now we're ready to export it 
by clicking save. It will go to the desktop. This little mini dog story is about 45 seconds, a little less, and you'll see it's saying it'll take about uh, 20 seconds or so to export, and so it is a quick version. Usually most exports are, uh, when you're compressing, takes longer than the actual uh, clip was. So there it is. So let's take a look at the desktop. Best way to do that, go up to Avid Media Composer, hide uh, Avid Media Composer, or Command H on the keyboard, and here it is. So let's click that and let's uh, go Command I to get the information. And here we see that it's almost a gigabyte. It's pretty close, 800 megabytes more or less. Uh, and it's only 43 seconds long. So that's a lot. That's a, a big file size for that little bit. Um, and so we want to compress that. We want to keep it, but compress it. So here's a couple of ways to do that. One, uh, something that happened a few years ago since Apple, Avid, and Adobe all hate each other is even though QuickTime movies are an Apple product, it doesn't like uh, the Avid Kodak that it's made with, even though it's the best version. So when you double click it to open it, and if it opens it with QuickTime Player, you'll see it wants to convert it to something else. Now, that's not entirely bad news because in converting it, it will reduce the file size. And let's see what we have. My dog story is Courtney Ballou, and that actually looks pretty good. And there's all the rest of it as we've seen uh, there. So let's just shut this down. When I go to shut it down, it's going to say, hey, you want to save this converted version? Sure. Why not save it to the desktop? Again, you can retitle it. And here is the dog story converted version. So let me open up this again, the the information and now let's open up this converted dog story first let's play it in a second and let's see if it actually looks like something yes it does there's Courtney Ballou she's still looking pretty good um, I don't really you know to the naked eye you don't really see much of a difference I think if you put one next to the other you might but again depending what you want to use it for and let's see is is it worth doing well yeah look how much less size wise it is so now you probably have something that's easier to use especially imagine like I said if the actual clip you're doing little movie you're doing is like three four five minutes you probably have like a four or five gigabyte file that would be hard for computers to play back certainly difficult to distribute so this might work for you uh, doing it this converted way with QuickTime Player. There are other ways to compress it other than relying on QuickTime Player, which when it converts it, you don't really have a handle on exactly how much you're compressing it. It's an automatic thing. So to do that, let's go back into Avid. Here we go. And now when we go to File, Output, Export to File, we're going to go to those options and we're going to change from same as source to custom. And once we click custom, uh, it gives us some format options. This window opens. I want to go to the video settings. So notice now it has selected a H.264 codec, something we talked about, the main delivery codec for the web and other applications. You can see you can select other things, but we want H.264 because it's going to give us the best compressed version. You have different options here that at this beginning level you don't want to tackle. And here, you know, here's the simple quality slider. Uh, if you drag it down, I find, you know, it, because again, it's a game between uh, file size and quality size. We want to have it kind of compressed. So you have to play with this and see what you like, but I, I usually put it, you know, closer to medium. And here in coding, I find faster encode uh, is quite adequate, especially if we're just screening, if you're handing it into a class to screen, if they're not going to be critically judging color correction and things, just to the naked eye, how does it look? Uh, best quality is multi-pass, meaning that 
it will compress a few times to make sure everything's perfect. That, as you might imagine, takes a much longer time. And I don't think college students have a lot of time. So maybe something you're doing on your own, your fantastic movie that's going to get you a job uh, in Hollywood, maybe you want to do that, delivering it to your professor uh, faster in code. So I would say in this version, make sure it's H.264, you know, between medium and high, and faster in code. So this, we're going to save that, we're going to save that, and now we'll save that, and again say that but here you have to change the name otherwise you will probably erase the original because it's also on the desktop so i'm going to call this dog story 2 uh, just so i know it's something different click save this now starts compressing notice that you know it's saying at least uh, it will take a little longer uh, that's because it's changing something it's not just directly welding the pieces together. It's actually changing the codec. It's changing it from the AVID codec to an H.264 codec. So it will take a little longer. Luckily, this is a short piece, so it doesn't really matter that much. But be advised, it will take a little longer. If we had selected multi-pass or better quality on the slider, it would take even longer than that. So it's a, it's a game of give and take, and you have to decide uh, what works best for you in what situation. Okay, let's hide Avid Media Composer again and take a look. So here is the original QuickTime movie that wouldn't play. Here's the converted. I'm just going to open up again the statistics on that so we can see. And here's the new one we did. Let's play it for a second. Let's make sure there's something there. Again, to the naked eye, without, uh, you know, possibility of comparison, it looks pretty good to me. But let's see the file size. Command I. Okay, so it's quite a bit less now. Quite a bit less. And you probably, if you really want to get it down, you can go back and play with the sliders and stuff and decide, you know, what level does it work? Like if you wanted to email it to somebody, it would have to be a little bit less size unless you're using a Google Drive or something like that. But I will say this. Here's the situation. You want to have not a full resolution version to deliver to your classes. And that's kind of like the focus of what we're doing here, preparing you for the other classes. So you're always going to want to make a compressed version. Another way to do it is to use something like Adobe Media Encoder bringing in the full res version and encoding it. Uh, something like Handbrake, a very simple, simplistic uh, application that I think is on the Hofstra computers. This can be something you can use at home maybe. It's downloadable, it's free. And that also gives you options for different deliveries. Both of these give you options very specific for something on Facebook, something on Vimeo, something on Twitter. Okay, so it's kind of a no-brainer and they both work well that you can play with very intuitive. So what you want to do here is you would take whichever one of these you wanted, these compressed versions, and deliver them to, let's say, the faculty exports folder. But you'd want to save this original, this original version for the future. Because, hey, you deliver it, then you, you know, a month later, she said, I never got that. You say, yes, you did, but you don't have uh, your Avid Media anymore for some reason. Well, at least you have this that you can reconvert uh, using one of these external uh, applications, perhaps, and deliver it. Or maybe down the line, you want to have a laugh with somebody and say, hey, look at this stupid dog story I did. Now, if you wanted to open this version, which we didn't do, but I'll show you how to do that since... Uh, like I said, for some ridiculousness, uh, QuickTime won't play exactly what it is, even though it's QuickTime file. You can go open with, and there is a uh, application on most computers called VLC. VLC will open anything. So I'm going to click VLC, open with, bop, bop, bop. There it is. So I think I, I'm looking here, and it looks like the colors are much richer. 
much deeper than the compressed versions and there's the idea of compression and not so there's you know there's a reason for having the original one and possibly adjusting the uh, quality levels that you have so uh, once you deliver these either you want to save them to your hard drive uh, you certainly want to save the original to your hard drive and then put the rest in the trash so there you go you're all set now to move on and create more stuff with avid media composer